Oh, hey, hey guys, how you doing? Welcome, welcome back to my stairwell. You're just in time. Uh, we're gonna start episode two of my award-winning uh, series, Projects with Foster. This is the virtual shop class that we're trying to keep Ballard Shop alive. By God, we've been there for over 100 years and we're not stopping now. Uh, I know it's been another crazy week. Governor says we're not going to get back to school. Uh, that makes me terribly sad, and I can't, uh, I, you seniors and, and everybody, really, I'm just so sorry. Um, try to connect where you can. Try to do something with your hands. Try to stay busy. Come up with a project you can do. Um, and hopefully at the end, we'll get to share all these wonderful things that we've done. You can learn a skill while we're stuck here. Um, and so I hope that helps. Uh, want to say thank you to everybody who watched my first video. Uh, we've had some great feedback. I got a real nice letter here from one of my regular viewers, uh, Naomi. Uh, she wanted to say, Foster, uh, I can't believe this. Oh, uh, thanks a lot. I really mean that. Thanks. My mom uh, saw your video and your email and thought, why don't I get Naomi to do some projects around the house. So now I am working 12 hours a day and she won't let me, I mean, in, how could you? Anyway, so she goes on to say thank you for the uh, encouragement and the ideas. And uh, so keep those cards and letters coming. I really appreciate that. Um, another little bit of feedback I had from the last video was my reference to Kazuhiro Sasaki, the Mariner's picture, maybe a little dated. Uh, he didn't pitch for the Mariners, I think, after 2003, so most of you were, were either not born or very little at the time. Apologize for that. Um, but I also have to apologize to stairwells. Uh, apparently, the story about Kazuhiro Sasaki injuring himself and being uh, out for 68 games, what he said was he was injured on a stairwell. Turns out maybe that's not the whole story. Um, he was known to like to uh, party a little bit and he may have been doing something else and didn't want to admit what he was really doing because it would have hurt his contract, which he lost in the end. Anyway, um, but my apology to stairwells, apparently he could not have had two broken ribs as serious as they were from falling up a stairwell. So uh, we'll get to the bottom of that. But here we are, last week um, we showed you how to use stripper and our scrapers and it took a long time but we got all of the old varnish off the stairs or most of it um, and now we've got to prep it for that next step for refinishing it and that means sanding a lot of that um, but before we do any of that what we need to do is we need to go around and make sure we don't have any nail heads that are sticking up or that are close to the surface. Reason being, when we run our sanders over that, if there is something sticking up, it's gonna rip our sandpaper uh, and we don't want that. So the tool we need for that is called a nail set. And uh, it looks a lot like center punches, right, that we use at school that have a point. That's for making a dent in the wood so you can get your drill bit started. Um, drift punches, this is from Metal Shop, like if you're knocking the pin out of a hinge or something like that. Um, <clears throat> this is a nail set. Looks a lot like a center punch except the very end is flat. And the reason being, what we're doing is we're going around and we're hitting these finished nails and we just want to drive that head down under the surface of the board so that it's not going to stick up. These aren't big regular fat head nails like you would think. Um, these are finished nails that have a smaller head. You could make your own nail set, you know, you could take a nail and, and file it down flat, different sizes for different nails. Um, but when you do it, um, the reason you don't try to hit that nail all the way in is, first of all, you're gonna leave tracks. You're gonna leave mule tracks on there. The, when the hammer hits and it leaves a sort of a horseshoe shaped ring there, you don't want that. So you can take your nail set Here's a nail right here. Most of this is tongue and groove, so there's not a lot of them, but I don't want to run over that when I sand down, so I just give it a little tap, and now I can feel it. I made a little hole there. I've shoved the nail down in there, and that's good. Really don't want to use a framing hammer, something like that, that's got the waffle on there. You're gonna to have to come back and sand all those marks out. We don't want to do it. So now I've got to fill that hole. Before I sand, I need to fill that hole. So there's a couple things I can do. Easiest is just get some putty. Some easy putty that matches your 
finish here. There's even easier. There's little crayons you can use. But uh, if I'm going to fill this hole, all I got to do is take my popsicle stick, a little bit of this putty, and then just gloop it right in there. Bloop. Try to go in from a couple angles so I know I get everything. Uh, you want it to make sure it's nice and flat or almost kind of heaping at the top. You're going to come back and sand over it, um, but you don't want it to contract. You don't want to use something like caulk. It's going to soak in and going to leave you a little divot. So the other thing you could do if you don't have any putty and I don't want you going to the store is take some of the sawdust. You already sanded a little bit. You've got the dust. Take your wood glue and all you got to do is mix those two together. Make your own little putty. Not too much glue, more sawdust than glue because again that glue will soak in and it will become part of the, the wood there and so you want more sawdust than glue. Unfortunately I'm just about out of glue, there we go. Just a little glooper and then again stir it up, I'm trying to make it almost molasses consistency if that means anything to you but you want it thick, you don't want it running so that I could do something with it like a vertical. I've got vertical holes here. I don't want anything running back out of that hole, but I can take my, my glooper and put it right in there and then we'll come back and sand over that. So that's filling our holes, that's putty. Um, once we got that, we let that dry and then we come back and sand. So two reasons we sand. Uh, Helena, you know what we're, two reasons why we sand? What's one? To make the surface smooth. Make things smooth, yeah, that's right. The other thing we do is we shape things. So we can use sanders. At school we've got the disc and belt sanders um, and the spindle sanders and the little strip sanders and all of those are shapers. So you have a 40 grit, a 60 grit. If you remember your abrasives, the lower number is the heavier grit. Here's 40 grit or 60, no this is 40 grit, really big grits, 40 of them per square inch, so they're bigger. Here is 80 grit, you can see half as many, still a very uh, rough paper. Uh, and then as we graduate, 80, 150, 220. And so these are my pads for my other sander, uh, but first we'll talk about the uh, belt sander. This is a little belt sander, a little hand sander. Real nice little unit. You can pop these off and pop them back on. Um, it's a great tool, but it's one of those that can get away from you. Uh, it will take off more material than you want to take off. And so be really careful whenever you're using the belt sander. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit here. The other thing is before you use it, what are you going to do with all that dust? Dust is nasty. You don't want to breathe it, especially now. Our whole world is about the masks and keeping your respiratory system healthy. Um, so what you got to do is number one, make sure the dust that you're creating doesn't go where you don't want it. You saw the plastic down there, you do a full Dexter and seal it off. We got the door up here sealed off. Um, so it's going to get really dusty in here, but that's okay. I can clean up this space. Um, but if it's going somewhere else, or if you have the opportunity, hook it up to a vacuum right away. And that way some of the dust is sucked up automatically. Even better if you've got one of these that is tool activated. So when I turn on the tool, the, uh, the uh, vacuum goes on with it. Um, other than that, for our PPE, again, I'm back with my knee pads. Um, a lot of these tools look like two-handed tools, but it's really just kind of a grabber. You're not pressing down on it, but it means you're going to be on your knees. Um, thanks to some uh, astute viewers also from our last show that I had my safety glasses on my head the whole time. Uh, extra credit, I knew some of you would catch that. Uh, thank you. Uh, they need to be on your eyes to do well. Um, and then real quick, masks. So you see me walking around school, I've got my little mask. I like it because I can quickly put it on, take it off, and it stops most of the dust. Uh, for something like this that we're gonna be sanding a lot, you probably want either something more like this. This is your N95. Now everybody knows about that. This one's nice because it's got a little extra pad and a little uh, uh, piece of metal on the top that you can kind of shape. Everybody's nose is a little different. You want it tight to your face. 
Uh, for something like this, because I'm going to be creating so much dust and I'm in a small room, I'm going to get my Big Daddy 3M. It's got bigger filters. It's tighter to your face. It's got more straps. Problem is, just like a PFD, what's the best one? The one you got. The one you're going to use. With one of these, for sanding in one room, I can do that. But if I'm walking around all day, I'm probably not carrying this thing with me. Um, so that's where the one you have is better because you will use it. All right, so this guy goes on, got a strap back across your head, and then you got one that comes across here. Wonderful tool, wonderful tool. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna wear my other one so you can hear me. Um, but don't forget that. Ear protection, always a good idea with these. Um, I've got the little ear foam plugs in, so that's how I'm keeping my ears safe, but especially in a small room like this, uh, you wanna make sure to, to protect your ears. All right, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna show you the belt sander. Belt sander is gonna take off a lot of material. I'm a little bit worried about this. I haven't really done it yet. Um, these boards that go different directions, I don't wanna sand against the grain, I have to come back and clean that up. Um, so I'm gonna try it down here on this step. Uh, Helena, if you'll step down carefully there, thank you. Uh, it's gonna get loud here for a sec. I'm just gonna make a couple passes back and forth. Thing with the belt sander, always make sure when you plug it in, it's not uh, on. Those little vibrating block sanders we have, they'll jiggle around, but this thing will take off, and you don't want that. It is very exciting. So, I'm going to put on my vacuum, I'm going to turn on the sander, and then I'm going to go back and forth a little bit, and we'll see what happens. Here we go. <laughs> took off a lot of material there. I'm not trying to get all the way down through all of the scratches, so I really want to be careful not to go too far and really like literally playing down these boards. I'm just trying to get that top finish off. So that works well, but the problem is I can't get into places that are tight. I can't get up next to things with this. Uh, so I'm gonna have to use something else. And that's where my buddy, the random orbit sander comes in, and that's this guy. Random orbital sander, similar to what we have at school, the VBS, the vibrating, except instead of just having the cam that wobbles around and makes the disc move, it also spins, which is great, takes off a lot of material, but it also means that it can put marks in different directions. So for the oak, I'm gonna start with an 80 grit. I'm gonna go back and forth as much as I can with the grain, again, these are gonna be hard. Um, I have two different versions of this. I have the larger version that has a second handle to it. Basically the same tool as this one. This one you can control with your palm. This one uh, you can have a hand down. Couple things on random orbit sanders. They can take material off quickly too, so pay attention to what you're doing. Don't press down on them. The handle here is really just for control. Uh, really you don't want much more than the weight of the sander. That's all it takes. You don't want to put a bunch of force into it. Um, you don't want to get these guys all gummed up, which is why we did such a good job scraping the varnish. These pads are expensive, and we don't want to keep replacing these all the time, and that's what will happen if you push down too hard. You will clog up the pads, and, and, uh, and you can't use them. So there's this guy. I'm going to start uh, with the smaller one here. Um, they are variable speed, so if it were a softer wood, we'll talk about that in a second, I'd want to go a little bit slower. Since it's oak, I'm going to put it up to about five out of six on the speed. Um, pad is just Velcro. These little pads, uh, there's different versions, different brands you can get. The holes don't always line up, um, but uh, again, they're not cheap. This is ten pads, five pads for six bucks, so that's a buck a pad. That's a lot. Uh, especially if you got to do a big job. So same idea, random orbit. When you're using this, keep it flat. You're tempted to want to tip the sander and you're going to leave marks that you got to come back and clean up. Keep it flat, moving it back and forth. Mask is on. Start it up here. Not pressure. 
pressing down, you don't make it work too hard, you can hear it spin in three, turn it a little faster. Pull it up before it does that, you'll leave yourself marks. Okay, so that's our random orbit sander. The other thing we're going to use is some hand sandpaper. Uh, if you remember, these steps are oak, but these are fir. So as we come down here, I'm going to take a couple steps down, Helena, if you would. Um, we're going to use probably not 80 grit, probably 150 grit. There's some scratches in these stairs that I want to get out a little bit, but I'm not too worried about. Um, but there's all those, these weird concave. I can't get into all my corners with something this shape. I can't get onto something like that. Um, so all I'll do is roll up some scrap paper like that. And then I have a nice little tube and I can come back again. I'm not trying to get all the scratches out of this. This is a real soft wood. Um, and it's going to get more scratches and it's going to get varnish over it. I'm not trying to get this whole thing as smooth as I would if I were oiling it. Uh, when we finish it, there's going to be a, a surface that goes on that really smooths it out. So, uh, so we're going to hand sand a lot of this. First, I'm going to hit it with this as about an 80 grit. And then I'm going to take my uh, sticky back. And this is 180. Stick it to your fingers and then it's much easier to just clean up the little areas, these corners that the sanders won't get in, clean those guys up, try to blend it in a little bit, uh, and then you're there. So we got a couple days of sanding coming up, nobody's favorite job, but once it's done, do it all quickly, tape it all up, and then clean it, wipe your walls down with a damp towel, vacuum everything up, you got to get all the dust out before we finish it. Next time, we'll talk about finishes. Varnish, polyurethane, all the wonderful things that, uh, that we can use. Um, I'll talk a little bit. I think we're going to do a little one on how to sew your own mask. Um, so there's lots of stuff coming up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you. Be safe out there. Pick yourself a project and get started. We'll see you later.